Hey everyone, welcome to Faith Life Church. So glad you're joining us this weekend. We're back with some live services and it's gonna be an amazing night tonight. So we're so glad you're here joining us tonight. That's right, thank you to those of you who joined us for our very first At The Movies Online. We were so glad you could be a part of that experience. But you know what, we are going full steam ahead into the Christmas season and so you're not going to want to miss a weekend. It's going to be fantastic. We always have amazing words. The team is preparing something awesome for our Christmas Eve services. You're going to have a really high expectation, and it's going to be met for everything that's coming Yeah, your just way. a little under two weeks now till Christmas. Is Does, it really? doesn't even seem right, does oh, it? Oh, no. I feel like it. some years it just, it just creeps up on you. I don't yeah. know. That's it, oh, no, for my personal life. I have a lot to do. <laughs> <laughs> Not oh no for Christmas in general. <laughs> Lots of shopping still to be done. Like Ninety some percent of it. But yeah, I would be yeah. ashamed to admit what all needs done still. But anyway, <sighs> something that you can help with. Maybe you have. I talked to someone tonight who has everything wrapped already. Okay. So if you're one of those people, good for you. And you're you thinking, how can I give back? We have our Christmas outreach, and this is the last yes. week to give. That helps people in need. We help people in our community who we we know needs a helping hand. And yeah. so if you want to donate to that, you can. That's awesome because I can remember we first started coming to the church here back in 09. There's a few years where we were actually Beneficiaries recipients. Of that. Yeah, of the yeah. Christmas Hope Outreach. So it's awesome to be able to bless people in need, guys, right. who, you know, just, just need some help. So you can go to faithlifechurch.org and give to that as well. That's right. Um, if you're not local. There's a pop-up for it. Yeah. So faith, uh, Christmas Hope Outreach last Tomorrow is the last day to give to that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And young adults, we do not want you to miss the Christmas get together. I know a lot of you love to be in community and find out who else is in your age bracket, who else goes with the four different services that we have, plus the Powell campus. So come on out to the young adult Christmas party this Wednesday at the Powell campus at 7 to 9 p.m. And um, that's ages 18 to 28. Wear your ugly Christmas sweater so you can oh. win the ugly Christmas sweater. I know some of you are going to rock that. Yeah, that's great. Do it. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Guys, we're excited. Pastor Gary and Drender here tonight. Uh, amazing word for you tonight. But let's go ahead and get into the auditorium. It's going to be a great night. We love you. We'll see you after service. Bye. Focused on you, you're the one my heart. 
joyful noise. Thank you, Lord.
all we want, God. You're our heart's desire. Yes, God, we praise you tonight. Come on, just focus on him right now. God, you're so good.
so much. Why don't you turn to someone, give them a high five, and you guys can take your seats. We're so excited to have you guys here at Faith Life Church tonight, and to all of those online, thank you for joining us. Tonight is going to be an awesome night. We have Pastor Gary in the house. It's going to be good. So sit back, relax, and let's check out these video announcements. Welcome. We're so happy to have you here with us this weekend. Let's check out what we have coming up at Faith Life Church. If you're a first time guest, our dream teamers are here to help you. We'd love for you to have the gift of Pastor Gary's Kingdom Thoughts book and also our special Living the Good Life t-shirt. Just simply fill out our connection card or scan the QR code on your chair. And if you have any questions, check out the welcome kiosk at your campus or chat with us right there on the screen. Here at Faith Life, we believe in equipping you to live out the kingdom in every area of your life. The best way to do that is through our Kingdom Track experience. Join us in this four-week session as you learn about the unique purpose God has for you in your faith, family, and finances. We have a free meal and free child care. It's after service, in person, or online. It will only take 60 minutes and you can jump in at any time. So we'll see you at Kingdom Track. If you're a young adult between 18 and 28, you do not want to miss our Young Adults Christmas Party coming up on Wednesday, December 13th at our PAL campus. We will have food, fun, and an ugly sweater contest, so make sure you're there. It's going to be a great night. Don't miss our Christmas services during our normal service times coming up on December 23rd and 24th at both of our campuses. Come share in the joy and excitement as we celebrate together with live Christmas music, a traditional service, hot chocolate, cookies, and more. Make sure to invite your friends and bring your whole family out for Christmas here at Faith Life. If you don't know about the kingdom, you need to reevaluate everything that you think you know about God. Coming to Faith Life in general has changed my entire perspective on life. It was almost like, you know what, out with the old and in with the new. The truth is so much different than religion. You need to know who God really is. Thank you so much for being here today at Faith Life Church. It's our heart that you would experience the kingdom in every area of your life. So for more info on how you can stay connected, visit us online at faithlifechurch.org or check us out on our FLN Connect app. Keep living the good life and have a great service. Coming to Faith Life Church, um, we, we heard a lot of teaching that we had never, we never heard of before. Like the, the reference or the phrase that the, the, the kingdom of God was not something that we were familiar with. It was something you read in the Bible, but not necessarily that you, that we thought of it as a structure of laws and principles that, that, that you can live by on the earth. So when they started the Power of Rest series, you know, he, he talked about how it's a, it's a different way of living life. 
you can you can live life on the earth living in rest so it's about the second week that he taught that that series that was like we heard a testimony in there and i was like man i just i just want to see the something happen in our life that we know that we can tie to so that was god like that was 100 percent god and so it was always maybe it was james and god but it was never just i could tie to and say it was god and it was god only so driving home we're talking about it i said you know what let's just, just let's 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 believe god for a, a ten thousand dollar blessing and if pastor's teaching it let's just take it and, and apply it literally you know that's what it says in the word you know in malachi 3 10 it talks about how you know, to try me. And, and that's the only, only time that God says to try him is in finances. And I'm like, you know what? It's finances, let's try him. We went on vacation, went to Mexico. So we took the time to just really dig into the word and we listened to the messages again. I think we listened to them every day. We just spend a lot of time talking about what we're gonna do with the money. We had just found out we were pregnant. We we're gonna have another baby, so we needed an upgrade on our vehicle. And Pastor also says, you know, believing is seeing. And, and that one threw me for a loop for the longest time. I was like, okay, how is believing is seeing? Because we always look at it as seeing as believing. And he said, until it settles in your spirit that you can see the picture. And sometimes it helps just to put a picture in front of you of what you're looking for. But if not, you know, build the picture that your mind can see it and you believe it and then and then you walk it out. And so that's what we were doing is just taking that and applying it and pretending it as if we had it. By the time we came home from vacation, it was it was weird. Something had changed. It was it was I could, almost like I could see it. Like I could I could see it, but yet it wasn't it wasn't that it would, felt like I was any closer to it, but it felt like I could see it. It felt like I I knew it was going to happen. Fast forward a, a few more weeks, Pastor kept teaching, and he kept talking about the double portion. And finally, it was like, man, I I really think we should just double it up. Why not? You know, if if, if ten thousand is great, twenty thousand is better. And but it was such a stretch. It was finally I was finally able to see the ten thousand. I could I could think I could comprehend of what that would look like. And I was like, well, if we go to twenty thousand, it's like, man, I don't. I just felt like I was starting over. I thought he was crazy when he said when he said twenty thousand. I mean, I di I didn't say anything. I was just like, twenty. We can't even do ten. What are we thinking doing, you know, doubling up? He was by the front door. He gave me a hug, kiss. You know, we prayed. And as he's walking out, he goes, double portion, 20,000. And I just said, okay. My day started just like any other day at work. I you know, got, got all my guys busy with projects and I went to my desk, work on office stuff. And later that morning, uh, one of my clients came in, plopped down on my desk and started telling me about his past few weeks. He's a farmer and his fences were in disrepair and his cows were running out. And he's just telling me all this stuff and I'm listening kind of one ear and the other side I'm still working doing what I need to get done for the day and and finally he got caught my attention when he said man I don't even know if I want cows anymore he said right now I said, I, I want to give them away and so that's kind of when I stopped and looked and said like, okay this is different this is not typically a conversation I have he said man I said I'm telling you right now I'm gonna give them all to you they're they're all yours and I was like, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know <laughs> what I'd do with that. You know, I'm a mechanic. I own my own, own repair shop. I live in town. You know, I have a half acre. Um, I grew up around the farm, but it's been a few years since I've been around cattle. And I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know. And just all these thoughts going through my mind. But then all of a sudden, there was a thought that was there. It was like, wait, hold on. This is not every day that somebody walks in and says, look, I want to give you a bunch of cows. So I drove out that evening, and as I'm leaving the shop, I call Ella, and I was like, I really think there might be something in here, but I, I don't even know where to begin with this. He goes, hey, honey, guess what? I'm like, what? And he's like, remember what we talked about? The double portion, 20,000? He goes, well, a guy just gave me a, a herd of cows. I'm like, he gave you what? <laughs> he's like, a guy gave me a herd of cows. I'm like, how many? He's like 23, he's like some are pregnant, and I think there's a couple horses or something. So I'm driving and, and I remember that we had a family member that was looking to buy a herd of cows. They're wanting to buy a herd of cows, and I thought, well, maybe, maybe there's an option there we could sell them there. So I get out to the farm, and I realized that his fences were completely in disarray, so these cows were out. And that's when I realized his property butts up against, you know, 14,000 acres of public land. So I was talking to the homeowner there, and I see he had a little corral there. I said, hey, go ahead and put hay and feed in there. Put hay and feed in there, and let's see if we can't get him to come in. 
and you know, just feed them in there for a few days and if they come in we'll go ahead and close the crowd and then we, maybe we can load them up and so I left that night and I call a family member and said look hey I want you to come out and look at these cows and see see if there's something you're interested in and I told them that look I'm these cows are being given to me and I'm selling them and if that's a problem I'll find an, uh, a, a different avenue of selling them and he said, no, no, that's okay. He said he, he was wanting to buy a herd of cows, and he liked to buy them from one farm. So that was, you know, that made sense to him. So I said, do you have an idea of what you'd be willing to pay for them? And he, we talked a little bit about it, and he said, well, he'd be somewhere around 20000 for the herd. I kind of did the math real quick in my head. I was like, 23 head, and let's say the average out of 1000 each, you know. And we take a number, some off and go on the low side and just say, all right, this is less than that. That's close to 20000 It's like, well, that's, we're, that's close. And I'm like, really? I got excited. I'm like, wow. I mean, we just said that that morning. I mean, because we were hearing about the double portion. So to me, I just remember immediately going, oh, we weren't receiving it because we weren't, we weren't believing for the double portion. Saturday comes around, and we're going to run into haul these cows. And I said, look, I said, you're buying them, but you also have to help me haul them because he's got a truck and trailer. And I said, you know, being a mechanic, I don't have that. And so you have to help haul them. He said, I'll, I'll do that. And so we finally managed to get them all on the trailer, and we hauled them and got them over to the, the family member's farm. And it was an awesome deal for him because he had, a, you know, a herd of cows, Aberdeen Angus cows that he had that, you know, he got you know, what he was looking for, and he got him for, you know, what he thought was a great deal, and we had our $20,000 check. It was just great to know that, um, that God hears us, you know, and that, that we are, that it does work, you know, mm -hmm. that what we've been believing for, you know, I mean, what are the chances? I mean, he cows at work. I mean, he works at a mechanic shop. He works behind a desk. You know, when, once, we, once we had that check, you know, we had seen the kingdom of God work in a way that it was like there was no there was nothing about us that was involved with that right. other than the work that we need to do to capture it yeah. and other than that i knew it was 100 percent god and that really just it stretched our minds to the the possibilities of what it means to live in the kingdom we were convinced like, yeah we were convinced it was like yeah. we had we had the check it was something we could go back to and say look this is we know this works yeah. Until your life represents the power of rest, you should listen to it. And if you're not sure if your life doesn't look like that yet, then you should go back and listen to it. If your life still doesn't look like that, then go back and listen to it. Because that's the way God designed our lives to be lived. Like, to live in rest. That everything we do is from a state of rest, like a state of, of knowing we're taken care of. That we have peace that, that He, you know, that nothing that we need of that He can't provide for us. I knew God was there to help you with the big stuff. But I didn't know that he would be there for all the little stuff. And I never heard anyone say that before. I never heard anyone teach that before until I heard Pastor teach that. And then with the Power of Rest series, like that's that's when he made it plain. Like it was just the way he teaches that series is bottom shelf. Like I, I got it. And I was like, okay, if that's for anything and everything that we could want and desire, you know, if to have a part of our life, then then why not? Well, I think really, <laughs> you just go home now. <laughs> There's so much in that that we must learn. And hey, how are you doing? I'm Pastor Gary, glad to have you. Glad to have you online tonight. <laughs> we started the, uh, started the video because it's, I know you would say it's a crazy story, but you're designed for crazy. I mean, really, you, you really are. I mean, you have to change how you think about life in the kingdom. And if you can't duplicate that, then you need to go back, like you said, and listen to it again, and listen to it again, and listen to it again, and again, and again. And it's interesting, on their vacation, they listen to it again and again. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 4 to make straight paths for yourself. Do not look to the right or to the left. Look at the word of God. And, you know, that, that's what you have to decide to do. You know, you, you, we come to church, and thank you for coming. But really, church is a great place, but it's almost like an infomercial. It's almost trying to help you understand what you need to do, not what you have to do. You know, coming to church is great, but you're the church. This isn't the church, you're the church, right? 
But it's really, I've got, you know, I have an hour, I have four hours a month with people and they're feeding on other things the entire month. And you have to, you must understand that you have to hold to the word and you must make a conscious decision. How did that happen? That you have to answer the question, how did that happen? All right, because you may not want cows or, you know, who, he didn't want cows either, but I mean, you, you must know how it happens. Now I'm gonna do a little review tonight. Um, I really feel strongly that I want people to, to get this. Interesting, how many were here Wednesday night? We had a great service Wednesday night. And if you remember uh, Wednesday night, if you didn't, if you weren't here, I taught, I, I had something planned and then I felt the Holy Spirit lead me to go over to Luke chapter 13 with the, uh, the woman that was bent over with, uh, couldn't straighten up, remember, for 18 years. Remember that story? And I felt led to, to go into that story and talk about we're coming to the end of the year and people begin to think what they've missed. You know, I didn't get this done. I didn't get this done. You know, I still have this goal. And you begin to focus backwards at the end of the year. And sometimes you can get yourself into discouragement because you thought so many other things would happen or you're, you're behind, right? But look forward. And I try to encourage people, look forward because it's not over yet. And I tried to help them understand God can happen, happen suddenly. Things can happen. I mean, look at that story. Suddenly, right? And amazingly, Wednesday night, a, a girl, a woman came up after service who wanted prayer. Uh, we, uh, she was visiting. It's just traveling through. And... Drinda began to pray for her. She needed healing, but we didn't know what for. And Drinda began to pray for her, and she had a picture as she's praying for her of her spine and a snake curled around it. And so she stopped and said, what, what, what is your problem? She says, well, my spine has been twisting for 25 years. I've been, uh, had this deformed spine, and it's now causing my organs to malfunction. I can't eat, and it's getting worse and worse. I think it's interesting how the Holy Spirit, Drenda took, you know, took authority over that, that spirit. But I think it's interesting how the Holy Spirit changed the entire direction of that service for that one person. Here we're talking about a story being, her, uh, being bound, couldn't straighten up for 18 years. Her, she's 25 years. And how God redirect everything for that one person. And so we have to remember that, you know, he can orchestrate events. It's never too late. It's never too late, right? Never too late. So I'm going to dig in here. I don't know how far I get. It's a lot of review, but you know what? I think that we've been talking about finances over the past few weeks when I was here. We had the movies, of course. That was great. But um, you have real issues, I mean, you, you know, things may be great, and that's great, but everyone's facing life, right? And you have to know how life works in the kingdom. Because, if, you know, you're gonna, you're, it's out there. When you leave church tonight, it's there, and you have to answer things. You have bills to pay. You've got kids to raise. You have things to take care of. And you need to know how it operates. And that's my passion to help people know that. So... As an example, I mean, our whole ministry is full of these kinds of examples. If I can get you to think this way, that all things are possible. You've got to get you, got to have to get you, I've got to get you past yourself, right? Because you've been trained so long to look backwards and make a decision if it's possible or not. Well, I've never, I can't, you know, can't, I don't know how. You've got to stop that. Because God knows how. But you remember the story of the, uh, the duck hunting gun, remember? Duck season's over. I'm in Cabela's. It's January. Don't need a gun. Not there for a gun. Didn't know they even had duck, gunning, duck hunting guns that were designed for duck hunting. Uh, I had heard of them. And I'm walking through Cabela's, and there they are. I see waterfowl shotguns. They're all stacked up there. And without thinking about it, I just because I do duck hunt in the fall, I said, Lord... I'll take that one. Didn't even think about it. Maybe a month or two, I can't remember the exact 
time period, a month and a half later, I go pre- uh, speak at a, a corporate event. At the end of it, the president comes up and says, hey, we want to thank you for coming out. We bought you a gift. It's a shotgun. And they brought the exact, everyone say the word exact, the exact shotgun out. Now, what I have to do is I have to get you to understand how specific the kingdom of God operates. Don't believe me, go look at nature. Okay? Because you are, you are, well, let me read this scripture first. Matthew 18, 18. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. You can't loose a whatever. What is a whatever? <laughs> right now, think of what a whatever looks like. Can anyone describe what a whatever is? No. Because you have a picture of something, right? But Christians, they pray in whatever terms. God, whatever you want, just give me any car, anything. Just I'll be happy with a, you know, an old, you know, rusted out you go. I don't, I don't care, just something. No, it says whatever you bind. We understand binding the enemy. But when it comes to loosing heaven, people are clueless. What are you saying? Well, you know, we just never pay our bills. We can't pay our bills. Well, I hope you enjoy it because you're releasing a whatever. You know, you're not releasing heaven to that, but you're just binding yourself up, right? So what are you, do you understand you have the keys to the kingdom? Do you understand who you are? Do you understand you have the authority of the kingdom of God and that you are every day speaking either life or death and you are walking in what you are speaking yesterday, that you are walking in that. So are you loosing? What are you, what are you, what are you loosing with? It's not a whatever, but people are afraid to fill the picture in. They're afraid to be disappointed. Well, I don't, you know, I don't really feel like, you know, I mean, Right? I've heard this one. Well, God knows best. Yes, he knows best, and he gave you that authority. Well, God knows best. You know, he knows what I need. He knows what you need. Well, then if that's what you believe, then we need to talk about a scripture over here in Matthew chapter 6. And you can explain it to me then, where he's talking in Matthew chapter 6. Let me see if I can find it here quickly. Okay. When you pray, this is Matthew 6, 7, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask. If he knows what you need before you ask, why hasn't he given it to you? See, that's what Christians think. Well, God knows what's best, and the Bible says he knows what you need. But then it says, then pray like this. Because God can't bring it into the earth realm unless you loose it. You need to go over that again. You need to think what I am. What, okay. This whole chapter of Mark, uh, Matthew 6 is talking about getting their needs met. And it ends with them talking about, you know, not to worry about life. You know, he has things, all that taken care of. But then it says, don't babble. What's the opposite of babbling? How about specific? For they think they'll be heard by their many words. Your father already knows what you have need of, so pray like this. In other words, you need to know how to pray, and you need to understand how this thing works. Save your breath. He doesn't need your complaining prayers because you have the authority. He's given it to you. And you will have exactly what you lose. They've got, they received exactly to the dollar what they loosed. They had no clue how it would come. It was beyond their normal thinking. You didn't think that concept but they kept listening to the word, listening to the word, listening, and they, faith began to grow, and they said, amen. 
Yes, we'll agree with that. Had no clue. But to the penny, what they loosed, well, pastor, what could they have said 100,000? They could have said $10 trillion. But would they have had faith for 10 trillion? No, I doubt it. They were stretching their faith for 20,000. Now, the next time, they'll go, they'll, they'll, they'll expand. They go, well, this is easy. Okay, are you with me? Okay, we've got to understand this. Going into the new year, you've got a new chance to start a whole new year. Um, I want to review uh, Luke chapter 8. You turn there with me. A concept which we, we have to know, and we, we've taught this everywhere. And you know it. I've taught it. But you know, have you thought about it this week? Maybe not. So we need to look at it. Now, I am known for teaching the kingdom of God how it operates because I'm passionate about why people fail and why they succeed. Why did that happen and didn't happen for you? You, you know what I'm saying? Why did, are they special? Does God love them the most? Are you hated by God? <laughs> No, so, but yet you, like I, see faith failure, or people that don't receive, right? And you see people that, well, you don't really see that often out there. <laughs> Our church has more of that than any church I've been in because we teach you. Um, but you, ha- you should ask questions. See, once you get in your mind, you know that God can't lie, and that there are laws that govern the kingdom of God, you understand the law never fails. So if, it fa- if a failure occurs, you must understand, if, well, in the physical realm, if the lights weren't on, you would know to fix the lights, to go to power or new bulbs, whatever. But see, Christians don't do that. They just change theology. Because they know God has the power to do things. But the issue is they have no clue of jurisdiction if, he, if it's legal for him to do it or not. That's why when Jesus left the earth, he said, okay, now you have my authority. He's seated up there with the Father, and you're seated with him. And he says, and now, you know, I have authority on heaven and earth. This is when he, before he ascended. Now, and now I have the authority, and now I send you. You have his authority. And so he says, now what you bind, you have the authority to stop Satan from destroying. I mean, you have, he, he is complete, he, he is no threat to you. He, you have complete dominion over him. You can cast demons out. Right? And I think people may, maybe understand that, maybe even more than loose. I think loosing is a blurry topic for most people. Because if it wasn't, they would see a lot, a lot of things happening in their life, and they just don't know how to grab it. So we, we really need to get into that. So let's look over at Luke chapter 8, uh, another story of a woman that was sick. And look at verse 42. Uh, halfway through the verse, we read this last week. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. So he's touching a few people, wouldn't he? Wouldn't you say? Yeah, okay. And a woman is there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. Now here's 12 years. We talked about 18 years, 25 years. So it's 12 years. And she couldn't, she, she was not healed. She came up behind Jesus and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? That's a crazy story. He's being touched on every side. When they all denied it, Peter said, what do you mean people are touching you everywhere? He said, no, someone touched me. I felt the anointing flow out from me. Now, you can bet that those people that are touching him besides her, probably many, had needs as well. Maybe even some that were sick. Would you not agree with that? I mean, you got a whole crowd of people there, and they're following him because he's known for his miracles. The woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet in the presence of all the people. She told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. I said last week, this sentence is a sentence that you have to understand. All right, so... All the miracles we call miracles, I, as you know, as a pastor of this church, I say don't use the word miracle. Because a miracle infers that something out of the ordinary happens. You know, oh my goodness, you see that miracle. No, you heard me say this. The supernatural is natural. All right. So 
It should be common. Why is it that way people get so like, well, because they've not renewed their mind to the laws of the kingdom. They still think that God is doing it just by favor or liking someone better or whatever reason. They don't understand that it's based on laws. So when something happens supernatural, they just kind of go, wow, you know, that's amazing. And it is amazing. But yet we're not talking about these light bulbs like that. You're, not, you're all not sitting, look at those lights, isn't it amazing? That's, that's, you know, it's amazing. Why? Why not? Because you've renewed your mind to electricity. It's as common as water to you. The laws that govern, you may not understand it all, but you, you understand that the lights are supposed to be on and there's a switch and there's power and electricity, right? And so it is with life today. I said last, uh, was it last, I can't remember, it was Wednesday night. It was Wednesday night. I was talking about uh, the first radio broadcast happened. I don't remember, it was back early 1900s. Or I talked about the airplane. I talked about Thomas Edison. All laws, radio waves, electricity, all those things were laws that have always been here. Always. But no one saw them. But once you understood the law, you could duplicate the miracle anytime you wanted to, any place you wanted to, right? All right. Until the laws of the kingdom become to you like that, that you've renewed your mind to them and expect the lights to be on, that you're not shocked the lights are on, but that you expect, you understand what I'm saying? That you expect this is going to happen because the laws never fail. God's told me this is, you know, and you then act and you walk on that confidence, like you get on a plane at 40,000 feet. Previously, you'd be afraid at 40,000 feet, but your fear has been replaced with another law that you've grown accustomed to. And if you're uh, maybe a little afraid to get on the plane the first time, but after a few times, you go, this is pretty cool. I like it, right? It beats walking, and I'm, you know, it's, it's cool. But you expect it. All right, you expect it. But see, if fear is still there, You've not renewed your mind and fear is still there. You're not in faith. Is that making sense? Now, I'm trying to help you. I'm, trying to, I'm a pastor. I'm trying to help you understand the kingdom because I want a whole church that can duplicate, well, not just issues with money, but whatever God says can be done. The girl with the twisted spine. You know, the, the gifts of the spirit, word of knowledge, revealed to Drenda. Exactly what's going on. The spirit of infirmity, right? And so there's so many people that need God, not religion. They need real answers. They need, re the real, they need God, not, the, not just the concept of God. They need God. They need healing. They need help. They need to understand uh, how life works. So, again, I always ask, I always say this, if you can't teach it, you'll not live it. If you can't explain how electricity works, what are you going to do? Get a bunch of wires and bulb and just kind of mess, you know, well, maybe this will work. I don't know, you know, short everything out. <laughs> no, but you see, once you learn how it works, then you're in charge. Okay. So this woman was sick, and Jesus in one sentence explained how she was healed. I talked this last week. I'm just reviewing this quickly to move on through here. But... We can dissect this. You said, I tell you, I'm a spiritual scientist. So the first thing I'm going to do when I read the story is, and you should do, how did that happen? Because we think of ministry that Jesus actually turned, lay hands on her and prayed for her, and she was healed, right? That's how we think of how ministry happens, correct? I'm going to go find a church. That, I'm going to go find, do you, do you have a word for me? You ever heard people say, do you have a word from God for me? You don't need a word from God for me. You know this much? Let's start here. <laughs> Let's make sure you got this part down, okay? It's amazing people come, Pastor, has God spoken to you about, you got a word for me? Or people come up and say, you know, it's amazing. I had a prophecy a couple years ago that I was supposed to prosper. You don't need a prophecy to prosper. You got the, you got the word of the king on that. Okay. So ignorance, friend, ignorance is not going to help you. You've got to become a student. I'm a spiritual scientist, so I'm going to say, okay, a lot of people are touching this woman, right? 
that only one received the anointing. Now, my, you should have already, your brain should be going, wait a minute, how did that happen, right? That's why it's written there. It's also interesting how it's written there that she gave up behind Jesus because it's illustrating that she was not healed by Jesus' decision. Oh, we could spend some time on that. Whose decision was it to be healed? Hers. Whose decision was it to receive 20,000? Theirs. What's your decision today? What are you saying? So Jesus did not stop and minister to her. Yet the anointing flowed. How? Because she tapped into it by her own, your faith. He said, your faith has healed you. Your faith has healed you. Not Jesus' faith, not Jesus' choice, but when we say you have been given the kingdom, you have been given the laws of the kingdom. See, you are a citizen of this kingdom, which means you have actually uh, total access to these laws. She tapped into the laws of the kingdom. Right? Okay. So Jesus didn't do it. She did it. And so I would say to you the same thing, that, okay, if you have the kingdom, you have, it's available to you, probably maybe you don't know how to tap into it. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe you come out of religion. You know, maybe you've never been taught. Maybe these parables are like blurry to you. I don't understand. You know, yeah, Jesus did it. You know, okay, Jesus did it. But until you understand that he said, what you see me do, you can do. He's a teacher. Do what I do. What you see me do, you can do an even greater things. Is that what he said? That's what he said. So that means you're not just observing it. He says, if you see me. In other words, what did he do? So you can duplicate it. You got to figure out what he did, right? All right, so the woman, he said to her, daughter, and again, I said last week, what does that tell you? She's of the Israelite. She's the seed of Abraham. So she has covenant. It's legal for God to heal her, but nothing's happened yet, right? It's legal for you to have everything the Bible says right now as you sit in your chair. You need finances, it's legal. You want healing, it's legal. You need, you need to uh, renew your mind to what a good marriage is or a good uh, relationship is or you name it. You have access to God's wisdom. I mean, right now, as you sit in that chair, every answer you could ever desire, you have access to right now. But why isn't it manifesting in your life? That's what you need to ask. Why wasn't it manifesting in this crowd of people that had needs? Why this one woman? What did she do? Right? What did she do? Well, he said daughter, so we know it's legal, but that didn't heal her, did it? Right? Okay. So what did she do next? Her faith. He said, your faith, not Jesus. See, most people think if Jesus shows up in my bedroom, he can solve all my problems. No, you have the authority. He'd probably rebuke you. Product, what are you talking about? Why do you, you know, you have the authority, deal with it. I mean, he's talked to me before like that. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, you know, we got, got this million-dollar check bill due here. Would you just come here and pay it for me? You got to deal with it, right? You have to you deal with it. Okay, so then, peace. Okay? The answer. Peace. All right, so I teach what faith is. So we now have to go back to basics 101 because you have to define how she was healed. So we go back to the basic. He said, your faith. So what is faith? You hear it a lot, right? Christians all say faith, right? But they're probably not in faith. It is a Christian term that we use so often. But most of the time, we're mentally agreeing with what the word says, but we're not in faith. Faith, having no faith or the faith issue is probably the greatest reason why people don't receive. Not the only, but probably the greatest. 
So we look at that. Now, I, I teach out of Romans chapter 4. You say, what's the definition of faith? The traditional answer is, of course, in Hebrews. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But it doesn't explain how it works. It doesn't explain why do I have to hear it, what happens. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't understand how it operates. So I go back to Romans chapter 4 and began to look at that talking about Abraham who had faith who was able to look at the fact that Sarah couldn't have babies anymore, yet he was what? Fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he said. Now there's the issue. The devil, the devil is on a high profile marketing campaign to convince you God is untrustworthy and his character is flawed, and that he doesn't like you, and that you are, he's mad at you, right? That's, he's, that's, what he, all, he, that's all he says. And then we have 90% of the churches that say, God allows bad things, God does bad things, God's trying to teach you something. And then we have testimonies from people who say, you know, I thank God for my cancer because it was in that, in that battle I, I discovered that God did this and this. And this. You don't have to go through a battle with, with the devil to learn about God. Okay, so let's talk about this. So faith is being fully persuaded. Now the next question is what? what be the, what's the next question? How do I become fully persuaded? Because if there's a tinge of fear or anxiousness there, you're not fully persuaded. Are you fully persuaded if I drop this Bible, it'll fall? If I did that 20,000 times, are you still persuaded? How about 20 million times? How about, no, I'm telling you it's going to float. I mean, if I sit here and say, it's going to float. Just hang with me. Hang with me tonight, friend. We'll get it to float. This is gonna, stay. Don't know. Don't, it'll float. Keep, just hang with me. You would think I'm nuts. Maybe you already think that. I don't know. But you would think I am. <laughs> but fully persuaded. The reason you don't believe it'll float because you are fully persuaded of the law of gravity. Fully persuaded of the law of lift, carrying airplanes. Fully persuaded of electricity. Fully persuaded that gravity works every single time and never fails. Now, that's what fully persuaded sounds like. And I use my example when I teach conferences. You know, I use color. I say, well, this is a, you know, I say this is a um, hunter orange. You know, the hunting jackets they wear, real bright. If I said this is orange, you would say it's not. It's maroon, right? Or burgundy, whatever you want to call it. And if I sat here all day and said, no, this is hunter orange, if I had five days with you, 10 days, three weeks with you, would I eventually convince you? Why not? Because you know that it's burgundy. Now, why do I tell people that? Because that's what it feels like to be fully persuaded. Because you have to be able to know if you're in faith or not. That's what it feels. See, you're totally confident. No one's upset that they might have missed it with the color. No one's going to leave you upset, right? It's like, oh, no, maybe it is orange. <laughs> no one is going to do that. Why? Because everyone's fully persuaded. And it didn't matter how much media, how much junk I threw at you, you're going to go, that's burgundy. But if the devil throws something at you, you know what? You're going to die of that whatever it is, of that hangnail. Now, don't, he does, he, oh, he talks like that. He'll tell you whatever. He doesn't care what. He'll try to tell you it's going to end in disaster. It's going to end in bankruptcy. It's going to end in death or de deformity or whatever. He's going to tell you all kind of stuff. He's a liar. He's been the father of lies. But if you're moved by it, you're not fully persuaded. You say, Pastor, how do I know if, you're, if I'm moved by it? If fear springs up, if anxiousness moves up, you go to Google it. Well, let's <laughs> hangnail, okay? <laughs> oh, my goodness, blood poisoning. I mean, oh, my goodness. So you could die of a hangnail. <laughs> well, friend, you can die of all kinds. There's endless ways you could die. Only one way you can live. Follow me? You must make the decision to choose life. And you must choose to, to train yourself to be fully persuaded. 
they went on vacation and sought to be fully persuaded. They listened again and listened again and listened again. Their mind might have been on tilt, but they listened again. They, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just, and all of a sudden, all by itself, the Bible says your spirit incubates the word and faith rises to the one. You know that, that, that's, that's, yeah, that's easy. I, got, I think I, yeah, I got that. Fully persuaded. Now, here's where Christians mess each other up. Oh, I've got this problem. Well, let me pray for you. It sounds so good, and it can be good. But do you know if that person's in faith? Do you know if they're in agreement? I mean, are you in agreement? I mean, are you fully persuaded? I, I'll tell you what, I will, I will go through the motions of praying for you so we feel better. No, what you did, you just inoculated them. If nothing happens, now they're doubting God even more. Am I right? So, Pastor, I don't know how, should I not pray for people? Sure. But do what Jesus said. Ask them if they can agree with you. Ask them if, ask them. And if you have faith for it, and if all they have to say is, yes, you can pray for me, because you're in faith. But if you're not in faith, you go, geez, I don't know, COVID, I don't want to touch you. I can't pray for you. You see what I'm saying? Friend, we gotta, we gotta stop playing the game. Uh, fully persuaded means you are fully persuaded. Okay, so the next question is, what's the logical next question? Help me out. How? Okay, so you analyze yourself. You now know that fully persuaded is like totally convinced. That's what Ephesians 6 is talking about, the shield of faith. It's not in your mind, it's, it's out here. It stops how many fiery darts? And so those are, those are thoughts. So if I kept winging thoughts at you, this is orange, this is orange, this is orange, and you have a shield of confidence, no, it's not. Ting, ting, ting. You're not nervous about it, are you? You haven't even taken mental assent of it, have you? It's not even entered your emotions, has it? You're like, are you done yet? <laughs> right? That's what it's talking about in Ephesians chapter 6 when it's talking about the shield of faith. The shield of faith, the shield of being fully persuaded stops every countering thought. It doesn't even enter your mind. It just like bounces off. But pastor, what happens if it doesn't bounce off? That's why I'm glad you're here. Because you have to have an answer for that. Because many times, if not many, many times, you're going to find, wait a minute, I'm not in faith. What are you going to do about it? And you have to know how to handle that before you go out and make, well, bad decisions, schedule surgeries, all kind of weird stuff. And surgery's not bad. I'm not saying surgery. I'm just saying don't make decisions concerning the answer you need without God. All right, so we need to know how does faith come? And you've been here long enough. Your Bible should open to what chapter? Yes. Well, that's good. That's good. That counts. That's, that's good. You're, you're close. Right book. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Again, Mark 11 teaches us how it works. But there's even a better chapter that I say is the Mark chapter 4. Everyone say Mark chapter 4. How many read it this week? How about this month? That's why I'm talking about it. Because you have to stay in the word. Mark chapter 4, turn there with me, running out of time. Of course, it's Saturday night. I don't, we don't have a, we could go all night. It doesn't matter. You could get up and leave. It's okay. But those that want to stay can stay, right? So Mark chapter 4 is, you've heard me teach this many times, but we have to remember it because we're in life. And without even thinking about it, we are receiving counter images and unbelief thoughts coming from all directions all week long, and we kind of remember when we were in faith, and we walk up to the mountain and speak to it, nothing happens because you have been out of faith for a few days, and you don't even know it. You have to learn how to discern if you're in faith and keep your guard up, which means don't feed on trash. 
This is going over really well, I can tell. That's awesome. It is good. It's going to save people's lives. Okay, Mark chapter 4. There are three stories here, but I go to verse number 26. And this whole chapter is how does faith come into our spirits? How do we come into faith? And this is what the kingdom of God is like, verse 26. If Jesus ever says that, which he says many times, he is about to tell you one of the key principles of the kingdom. And you better have a pencil out when he says, what is the kingdom of God like? He's going to give you an illustration that you must understand. A man scatters seed, or a woman scatters the seed on the ground. We learned in the, in the previous chapters that the seed is what? The parable of the sower. The seed is the word, and the ground is your heart or your, your spirit. A man scatters seed on the ground night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up. The seed, the word, sprouts. Obviously, like a seed, it carries, it germinates. The life is in the seed. Not the dirt. Hang on that for a while. You, being the dirt, will always start out not in faith. It's the word that produces faith in you, in your spirit. And it's your decision to take the word and hold on to the word that allows it to do what it does. Just like a farmer... A man scatters the word on the, on, into his spirit night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up. The seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil, which is your spirit, produces grain, life. The word, the, word, the seed is growing. It's, it's going to produce agreement. Now, it's not agreeing yet. It's going to get there. So when the farmer sowed the seed, when heaven sows God's will or what heaven has in it into the earth realm, he sows it into the heart of a man or woman. All by itself, that spirit, the, the, the person's spirit incubates that, and all by itself, his, their spirit begins to produce agreement with what heaven says, or I may say it this way, begins to produce fully agreement, or fully agreeing with heaven. It hasn't happened yet. You gotta hold on to the word. It's not mature yet, but you, you know, the enemy's going to come in that season between the planting, the germination, and the fulfillment. That's where you're going to have always a period between the amen and there it is. He's always going to come in that period of time to try to convince you nothing's working. It's not working. It's not working. But because you understand how it works, how it incubates, you're going to resist that because you know the word can't fail. It's always going to fail. It's incorruptible seed. It will always produce so I choose to hold on to it knowing the process. This is why Jesus told us this. So you hold on to it, and then you have the stalk, and then it goes up into the head, the mature head, the, the seed in the head. Now you have the seed in the plant, in the earth realm, that matches the seed that was sown into the dirt, right? So the, the kernel corn that you've sown now matches exactly the kernel corn that's now grown. So the will of heaven has been sown into the earth realm, and it matures, it incubates until one day it looks the same. What heaven says is what you say. Not because you're trying to. Let me say it again. Not because you have to keep your confessions up. Now, I do believe in hearing yourself say the word, but we have this concept that, you know, well, I can't confess. If you even have to think that, if you have to think I can't say that, you're not in faith. Because when you believe something, that's all you say. Oh, I'm supposed to say that's red because I need to be in faith. That's what we've heard in the church so long, right? It's like, well, I got to watch my confession. You know, I got to watch my, well, yeah, you do need to watch what you say, yes. But really, the words you speak are from your heart. You need to watch your heart. Because if you watch your heart, you're going to say what the heart says. Is that right? I mean, you're going to say what you believe, right? That's why I listen to people what they say. Well, I don't know why this is. You listen to two seconds, you know they're not in faith. And that's okay. Well, let's help him get in faith. Let's, let's talk to him, right? But you have to judge yourself. Am I in faith? And if you're anxious and you're talking like, you know, okay, I'm not in faith. That's great because so many Christians get mad if I say you're not in faith. How dare you say I'm not in faith? Well, you just said you're going to stay sick. 
Now, you don't know if I'm in faith. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. So faith. Now, let's move on here. So we know, we know how to produce faith. When they match, fear's gone. So when, right, let's look at the next example. I love this. It goes through here. Let's look at uh, the 30th verse again. What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Bingo, whoa, hold on. Get my pencil out. What parable, what, how can I illustrate this, what Jesus says? How can I get this across? It's like a mustard seed which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground, yet when planted, it what? It grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade, meaning that it has shaded out all the weeds, the contrary voices. When you close your eyes now, when you're in faith, all you see is you're healed. All you see is that financial problem. Nothing maybe have changed in the natural realm. But now fear is gone and you're totally convinced all you can see. See, even though it's a small little seed, it becomes the largest. It's going to shade the entire garden. It's going to shade the entire heart. And now all you see is, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, I, I see the answer is everything I look. The answer, answer. It's, I, I, I got it. Peace is there. And I'm sure most of you know, if, or you will know what it feels like that you know that you know that you know that we, that's how we say it. Well, I know that I know that I know that I know because you're in faith and it's like, it's over with. There's no voices yakking at you anymore. It's done. That's what faith looks like. If you're laying on your pillow at night and you got voices yakking at you, you're not in faith. Get up and put the word on. You gotta counter that. And you've got to take the word and hold on to it. And you know it's going to be incubating in your spirit. And you've got to fight that fight of faith and hold on to that word. The fight is over the word that you're holding on to. Your thoughts. Now, once you're in faith, this may throw you. I hope not. I'm going to end on this one because I'm out of time. If you're in faith, you may still be sick. Now, before you run out of here, let me explain. When you were born again, Romans 10.10 10 says, you believe the word of God and you are justified. That means the administration of law. The word justified means the administration of law. But the sentence doesn't end there. You believe and it makes it legal, justified. It makes it legal for heaven to bring salvation. It's now legal for heaven to invade your life. But it doesn't stop there. It says, then you confess unto salvation. Or you confess the answer. You then release that agreement. See, you can be in faith and still be sick if you don't know how to release that authority and that anointing. Is this making sense to you? Now, when you're in faith, the, the fear's gone. But you have to release in the earth realm, you have the jurisdiction, unless you say something. Oh, I believe that, but I believe, I'm, I, I, you know. No, in the name of Jesus, get out of here. See, you've got, there comes a point when you have, you're in faith, but then you have to release that authority. You have to speak to it. Now, when you're in, faith and you speak, things happen. Because then God's... See, you don't have any authority unless it's God's. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. See, you, you're only resisting him with God's authority he's given you. You don't have any authority of your own. That's why you've got to be submitted to God that you can operate in his authority. So I hope I didn't throw you. So if we're in faith... We can have, we can have uh, the fears gone, but the answer may not be manifest yet. We still have to, as we, we, in the other scriptures here, it talks about 
We've got to put the sickle in. If we go back to the previous version of verse 26, Mark 4, he talked about that, the full kernel. The, the, the plant's mature. We have agreement. The seed matches heaven. Total persuasion, agreement. But it says, then the man puts the sickle in because the harvest has come. If he didn't put the sickle in, he could be in agreement with heaven, but there's no fruit. Right? And I've taught so much on that. You got to put the sickle in. And people try to put the sickle in when they're not in faith, nothing happens. You got to know if you're in faith. <laughs> okay, friend, I know you can see blank faces out there. Say, huh? Help me out, Pastor. <laughs> okay. I'll say, you, you, do have to, you do have to learn this. You have to learn this. This is the king. This is basic one on one kingdom. And that's why Jesus took a whole chapter to talk about it. I don't have time to go over it. But if you'll rehearse this and practice discerning if you're in faith and how to deal with it, get the word out, you know, the word's going to counter fear. You can't have both at the same time. And it's like if, uh, I don't know, something's. Well, I'd, an example, I've taught this before, but. Um, can't remember her name down in uh, Albany, Ohio. She had diabetes 30 years, in and out of comas. And one day she saw the word of God talk about healing. She took three by five cards, breakfast, lunch, and supper. She quoted the promises of God concerning diabetes. Wait a minute. I mean, nothing changed. What was she doing? She was holding on to the word. Every time she ate, she took a scripture, a promise of God. 30 days later... She got sick, went to the hospital. They said, well, you're sick because your insulin's all messed up. Stop taking that stuff. You don't need it anymore. Completely healed. In fact, she was 80, I think, I don't know, 76 or 80 when I was with her, and she ate two giant pieces, pieces of apple pie. She said, I just can't stop eating sugar. She said, 30 years, I never had it. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> She's having a good time. It's all right. So in the process, we have to understand what faith is, how to operate in faith, how to exercise these basic principles. So it's Christmas, and of course, I've been talking about finances the last couple of times I talked, and so we saw an answer. This fine. Listen, faith, and the word has everything in it. If you're anxious about money, go to the word. Let God, see, once you get in faith, the Holy Spirit can give you an idea. He can talk to you. Speak to you in a dream at night. Give you a vision. He can talk to you, right? Money's easy to, I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but the enemy does not want you to have money. I'll guarantee you that. But God's word will produce that in your life. Amen. Let me see if there's one more thing I want to cover in this section. Um, okay, we talked about that. We talked about that. All right, stand together today. It's a brief review. So again, what you want to do is you put some teachings in your car. Listen. Over and over again until you allow the word of God to produce agreement. Though you don't know how. All by itself, your spirit is designed to do that. And you'll, you're going to see evidence in your life. Almost without, without fail, all the stories that we put on the screen that have major breakthroughs, you're going to hear this common thread. We listened and we listened and we listened and we listened over and over and over again. And sometimes they go crazy. Listen, lift it on, left it on 24-7. I'm not saying do that. But, I, you know, we listened and we listened and we listened because we, we, you know, we had to get it. We had, and then one day, okay, you know, they get it. So I'm your pastor and I, I, I want you to get it. That's my job. I can't make you get it, but my job is to teach you uh, the kingdom, how it works so you can get it. And then go out of here and you'll be ready and equipped to handle what's out there in the world and set people free and invite them into your world, right? Not religion, but truth. Bow your heads with me today. If you're here, we're all gonna pray together, but maybe you're here and this is kind of new to you. And if it is, well, I'm glad you're here. It's life-changing, changed my life.
completely. And it'll change yours as well. But the first step, of course, is knowing Jesus, becoming part of the kingdom of God. That's very simple. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of Jesus has the legal right, again, a legal right, to become a citizen of that great kingdom and a son or daughter of the household of God. Sons and daughters have the inheritance. We have the entire kingdom as sons and daughters. So we're going to pray out loud. If that was you and that's you and you say, well, you know, New Year's coming. I need to, I, boy, I'd like to know how this stuff works myself. Good decision. Good decision. But we're going to pray out loud. If you say, hey, Pastor, I want, I'd like to be part of this prayer. If you're online, you'd say, I'd like to be part of this prayer. Just raise your hand and say, include me. Again, we're all going to pray out loud. But you say, include me. I want to be included in this prayer. I want to say yes to Jesus tonight. I'm heading into a new year. I want to know how this kingdom operates. Put your hands up high and say, yes, include me in this prayer. All right, online, the same thing. Let's say this together. Say, Father, you said in your word that if I call on the name of Jesus, that you'll receive me, make me brand new on the inside, teach me how the kingdom operates, and I need that. So today I say yes. I make you the Lord of my life, and I receive all your promises as yes and amen. And now you are the Lord of my life and my Savior. Amen. Amen. Now you can have a seat. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I was, I was, let me mention this. We're going to close here and get your offering ready. We're going to take that for in a minute. Um, the kingdom's not hard. I think I told you two weeks ago, my old nine-year-old, you know, I taught him how to hunt deer. I said, now, Dawson, we're going out bow hunting. He's never shot a bow before. Now, Dawson, we're not going out there and hunt for the deer. I stopped hunting deer 40 years ago. We received deer. So what we're going to do is we're going to sow a seed. Mark eleven twenty four. when we pray, we believe we receive, we shall have it. And we're going to name that seed deer, provision. And when we go out there tonight, the deer are going to come, and you, you know, you have to hit them. I mean, obviously. And nine-year-old, let's put Dawson's picture up. So he got his button buck. And I said last time, I said, He'll never forget that. Well, then his cousins said, the nine-year-old, okay, put Katie's up. So Katie goes out. She's nine. She gets her buck. First time out. And then let's put up Shiloh. He's seven. Shiloh got a button buck and a buck. So here's what I would say. If the children can operate in the kingdom, certainly we can handle it, friend. (laughs) Amen. Amen. So giving, of course, uh, we're at Christmas. A lot of of things happen at Christmas. A good time to sow. We're camps. Everything's moving along, but we have always huge needs and always, we spend money. You know that. We got things to get done, just like you do. But the key is, Jesus said, given it shall be given back to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your heart and your life. And with the same measure that you give, it shall be measured back to you. So you have a, an ability to operate in finances in a circular, flowing fashion. You know, your part, you know, it's a flow. When you begin to hoard it, it, gets, it dries up. So I want to encourage you tonight to be generous. Not just here at church, many people out there uh, today at uh, Christmas need, need a little boost, a little greater tip than normal maybe, a little encouragement. But also, this is a great time to, uh, as we close out the year, to give towards the camp. Uh, it's moving along great. Uh, it's not paid off completely yet. But besides paying it off, we have probably about a half million dollars worth of, you know, things we have to do to the camp. So we're going to get that ready for 24, and it's going to be great. But uh, well, let's stand together, and let's believe God. This isn't a religious moment. Let's believe God. All right, lay your hand on that giving. Online, lay your hand on it. If you're giving by your device, lay your hand on the device. By check, checks go in the rear of the the building. And let's say this together. Say, Father, it is an honor and a privilege to be part of your kingdom and part of the people business with you. And I willingly 
with thanksgiving, so into your, your life, to your, 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 your mission. And I thank you that it'll come back to me again and again and again. So I say thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So now if you're here, we have uh, one thing if you are asking, I don't understand all this. We do have a kind of an orientation session called Kingdom Track. Now it happens next. We have a meal prepared for you right now. It's already ready, right around the corner. It lasts 50 minutes and it has a, uh, like I said, it's an orientation session that talks about the next steps here at Faith Life and how to get involved, how to uh, learn more about the kingdom. And so if you're new here, consider uh, going up there and having a, a meal and kind of just finding out more about it. And we'd love to have you up there. I'll be up there in just a minute, but we'll see you uh, next week. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Our prayer team's coming forward. And we thank you, Father, that they are equipped for this generation. They're not afraid. They're full of life. And they go out and share the gospel and share life and truth this week. Amen. Amen. See you next time. Hey, family, welcome back. And just another great word from Pastor today. Whenever he gets to talking about faith and the kingdom, you better listen. You better listen. You better listen. listen. Yeah. I thought one of the things that was very impactful was that being persuaded stops every countering thought. So when we hear those things, so, so the thoughts are going to come. Like they're, like we can't, you ever heard that saying like, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can keep it from making a nest in your hair or something yeah. like that. It's like that. Like we, we, thoughts are coming because we live in the world. We see things going on. We see people get sick. We see people that, you know, dear Aunt Betty that loved Jesus with all of her heart died from this or that or something like that. But we have to know what the word says. That's why you can't wait on somebody else's word. You have to have the word. And it's the incorruptible seed that produces every time. Every time. Yeah. And if we're not seeing that, we have to understand that the shortcoming is not on God's behalf. We have to stop questioning the character of God because we're not seeing the outcomes that we want to see. And that's what the church has done for a long, long time. That's that's true because we're all, all of us, and I, I liked how he used the examples, like he's dropping his Bible and he's talking about the color of his Bible mm -hmm. and things like that. So a lot of us, we are fully persuaded. We're all fully persuaded about certain things. Mm -hmm. We are. Right. But being in faith is about being fully persuaded of what heaven says, yeah. what God's word says, what the Bible says. Exactly. But I love that analogy because... We, we can understand being fully persuaded. Mm -hmm. As believers, I think the biggest problem is, is being fully persuaded of what the Bible says because we've been raised in churches and in homes where we're taught certain things, where we grew up believing certain things. Yeah. And really what the Bible is going to do, if you really get into God's word and believe it as being true, it's going to change your perspective. Yeah. That's where we, we have to get our perspective uh, change. That's right. A lot of times, like we had a, a chance this week to be on a cruise ship for the first time. We did. We've heard a lot of people talk about what they're, what it's like and everything, but now we have our own perspective, perspective. on it. We've mm -hmm. stood out there and we saw, you know, all, you know, you go and look and everywhere you see it's ocean. Mm -hmm. You know, it was interesting. It was. And it was a great experience. It was a new experience, but now our whole perspective on that's changed. Yeah. And I, I, I got to give a shout out to Patrick and Janet Burgess in Tampa. Love, Love you guys. guys. Got to see you a little bit this week, but uh, we had a chance to talk with them a little bit and they just talked about how everybody that we hear who has a story at Faith Life, they always talk about how they just kept listening to the to the messages. They just kept listening. To them. Have we heard that before? Yes. And, and just hearing them say this, so this is what we've been doing. We've just been listening to the messages. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it changes your perspective. That's right. You and know, it changes the picture Pastor talks about. If you... You can go to faithlifechurch.org, and I believe it's under media and then stories, and you can just go and listen to stories like you saw James and Ella's tonight. You know, we rub elbows with them in here all the time. The kingdom is still manifesting in their lives. It is not reserved for certain people. That is one right. of my root beliefs is that if God will do it for one, he will do it 
for me. Amen. And he is not a respecter of persons. And Pastor touched on that tonight yeah. as well. But, you know, a place that you can get connected to people who will help you keep your perspective straight is FLN Connect. Like, and this is not a sales pitch. It is because we don't get anything from that. You're you're there and... Uh, we do get something from it. We get you. We do get you. And we want you to be a part of that. We want you to be part of the community there. So go to flnconnect.com or download the FLN Connect app and, and get involved on there. There's so many different things. You, you'll find out about groups or find out about Kingdom Advance groups, find out about partnership. There's free courses that here in the last few weeks that we've offered to yeah. anybody that joins on there. There's free access to some of these courses, the Faith Foundations course, a lot of the, the stuff that you heard Pastor Gary talk about tonight. If you're new to Faith Life Church, go through that Faith Foundations course, man. You can go it's... through it over and over and over again. There's also the Your Financial Revolution Conference on there. That's five different sessions. That's some of Pastor Gary's core teachings yes. on finances and understanding the kingdom of God in your finances. And then we also have Healing is Yours by Pastor Amy Frutiger. And she is just a phenomenal teacher and just has such clarity in how she shares the word and how it can penetrate your heart into the healing of your body. Yeah, you you come to service tonight and you get a, you know, 30, 45 minute message from Pastor Gary. There was a lot in there, but there's so much more. Um, he's just able to touch on stuff in a, a one weekend service, right? Right. There's so much more. You can get uh, all this information on FLN Connect. So we really want you guys to be a part of that. Also, we have a online campus group on there, mm -hmm. uh, continual chat. We post more stuff about, you know, things that are going on just from an online campus perspective. So if you're not local uh, here in Central Ohio, a lot of ways for you to get involved. We do an online monthly meetup. We'll talk probably about that more next weekend. But, you know, on December 31st, after our 1030 service, we're going to have an online communion service to, to kick off the, the new year. So there's just different things that we do uh, that's just for our online community. We want you guys to be a part of that. We want you to be involved. We want you to get it. The things Pastor Gary talks about here, uh, he, he, and, and this comes from, from he and Pastor Jones as well. They just want to see you win in life yeah. and understand the access that you have and the authority you have. Understand the kingdom of God is real, and it's for you, and it's for everybody out there, and people That's need right. to see it. We have a world out there that needs to see it. Yeah. They really need Are to see you it persuaded? in operation. Are you persuaded? Are you and he said, don't just watch your mouth, but watch your heart. And that's Proverbs 4.23, because out of the um, heart is all the issues of life. That's where yeah. it all comes from, is from here. So your mouth is just speaking what's in your heart. So we have to get to a place of persuasion. And so that can come through the word of God. That's the foremost yeah. way. Right. And then... Out of that, that's where all these other teachings come from, is just breaking down those principles. So that's why those are really good to listen to over and over again. But they're based in the Word of God. If you can't yeah. find it in the Word of God, ignore it completely. Yeah. And that's hard to do. But with repetition, it's not. It's a repetition thing. Yep. So, Lord, we just thank you tonight for your presence in our lives. We thank you for the things that you're doing in and through us as believers and how you're teaching us and training us. And, Lord, I just thank you for your love tonight, Lord, that uh, some of us uh, may be out there tonight and we're just thinking, man, I just don't get this or I just don't think this is for me. Lord, we just cast down those thoughts, those doubts tonight, and, and we just believe that, that every person uh, that can hear us pray, can hear us speak tonight, understands that, that your word, your kingdom is for them. God, that you are for us. And if you are for us, your word says, who can be against us, Lord? So we, I just thank you that, that, that you love us tonight, that you love each and every one of us, Lord. And, and I thank you that you, you give us opportunities to learn and to grow. And I thank you for platforms, Lord, like FLN Connect, uh, where we, we can be a part of and, and develop and grow as a team, knowing that there's others out there uh, who are cheering us on, uh, who want us to win. And uh, we're just, we're just going to do it together. We're just going to walk this out together. So we thank you tonight for, for all the many things that you're doing in and through our lives, in and through our online community. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you the glory for it. We give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, also, you know, we have people that can build us up in Christ on FLN Connect, but these people also make great friends. And we just had... Sure. The best time visiting with Patrick and Janet Burgess in yeah. Tampa this weekend. It was so fun to see them, and it's it feels so special. Like if you get connected, you can have friends all over the world. Yeah. And God fulfilled my heart's desire in that, and just reminded me of that again when we saw 
these awesome people. You are an awesome people. Yeah. You are destined to win. That's why God created you. So Amen. don't give up. Don't give up. It might be hard. You know, you might be discouraged, but that's okay. You can win in life. And we believe in you. We want you to keep going. Keep going. This time of the year, sometimes it can be hard, right? Because mm -hmm. we're thinking about Christmas and all the things. And, you know, we got, we got to remove all those things that we've built up about what this is all about. It shouldn't be yeah. a time of stress, you know. Yeah. It's, a, it's a time where we celebrate the, the, the new coming king, you know, Amen. and what that represents in our lives. And, you know, sometimes we just might have to refocus how we do Christmas in our, our homes, yeah. you know, to make that clear. But, uh, man, God has good things for you. And what an amazing word tonight. Hey, come back tomorrow, 9 a.m. or 1030. Uh, you can hear uh, Pastor Gary again. Uh, if you're local here in Central Ohio, come back and join us in person sometime. Our PAL campus has services at 1030 on Sunday. We have, uh, again, two, three services here in person in New Albany. Yeah. Uh, so come visit us sometime if you're, if you're you know, local here to the Central Ohio area. But, guys, we love you. Have a great uh, rest of your week. Get that Christmas shopping done. That's right. You know, get those, get those preparations in order because it comes fast. But uh, we love you, and we look forward to seeing you again uh, next weekend. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.